Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're doing all right. In the last video, we talked about dictionaries, how to set one up, add and remove values, and get values from the dictionary itself. In this video, I plan on teaching you how to implement for loops so you can grab those keys and values from the dictionary so you don't have to hand type every value that you wanna get out from your dictionary. With that being said, let's get right into this video. All right, so if you watched the previous video, this code should look really familiar to you. To start off, I just wanna replace this dictionary with a new one. So we have the three names that we worked with in the last video, plus three more, just so we have a few more things in the output. And I just wanna get rid of this print statement and replace it with a for loop. So we're gonna do for i in students, colon, and we're just gonna print out the values that the for loop attained from our dictionary and see what we're working with. So we'll save it and run it. And if we come down to our terminal, we'll see that we get all of the keys from our dictionary. So one thing we can do with that is using the stuff that we learned from the previous video is we can type in students, the name of our dictionary, dot get. And since we're receiving, since all the I's are the keys for the values within our dictionary, we should be able to use the value of I to also get the values from our dictionary. So if we save this and run it, we do in fact get all the values within our dictionary. So there are a few methods that we can use to obtain the keys and the values from our dictionary. They are students.keys. So if we wanted to print that out, we'll just take this, drag it in here. And we can also do the same thing for values. So instead of keys, we'll just write values. So if we save this one and run it, you'll see that we get all of our keys and all of our values that are within our dictionary up here. So one thing we can do with this, instead of writing it this way to get all of our keys or all of our values, we could do something like this instead. We do for i in students.keys colon, print this out, P, and we'll print out I, but we can also do it with for I in students.values, if we do this, but we'll get the values this time. Beautiful, save it, run it. And you'll see that if we come down to our terminal, we will get all the keys and all the values. So right there, that's two ways that you can get either your keys or your values from your dictionary. So if we erase this stuff, there is one more thing you should know about, the dot items method. What this is going to do is it's gonna give you two items that you have to unpack. So instead of putting for i in students dot items, we're gonna to have to do something like this. So we have keys and values, so we're gonna do K for key, comma, value. So we're gonna define two variables and then the two items that will be unpacked from our dictionary will be stored into these. And the items that this thing's gonna have us unpack are our key and our value. Each time it iterates through, it'll give you both the key and the value associated with it. This will make more sense when we print it out. So if we print out, we'll say this is the key key plus, we're gonna have to convert that to a string, k for key, and then we'll say, this is the value. Plus, uh, convert this to a string as well, and then v, sweet. So you can look down in the terminal, this is the key, it's one, and then this is the value, it's Jill. So I think what'll make this a little bit more clear, we'll just get rid of this stuff, is if we were to print out each method that either grabs keys or values. So if we did students dot, let's do keys, and then we'll just copy and paste this. It's a little bit quicker. So if we did keys, we can also do values. And then actually I'm gonna print out again so there's a space there. And we can compare the two items. So if we run this, you'll see when we get 
the dictionary keys, when we run that method, we'll get all the keys, but they'll be in a list. And if you take a closer look, there's only one item within each element. And that's the same thing for the values. There's only one item for each element. But if we look at the dictionary, you can see that it's stored two items. So that's why when we come back up here, if we were to run that for loop again, so we'll have our key and our value in students, not that, students.items. So that's why when we're using the dot items method within a for loop, we have to use two variables to unpack both of these items that are stored in this element. So I guess the big question to answer now is why would we ever want to loop through a dictionary? So imagine we had some user's input and they have a key and they want to know what person is assigned to that key. What we could do is we could use our for loop. So for I in students dot key, All right? What we can do is let's define the user's input first user's input, let's say it's three. So then if I equals three, we can print out the person that's associated to that key. So we could do students dot get I. So we'll print that out. Otherwise it won't print out anything. So if the user gave us a key of three because they wanted to know who that was, oh, this shouldn't be three, this should be user's input. So the student wanted to know who was assigned to key three, so we can loop through the, all the keys within our dictionary, and then if I, the key that the for loop is gonna pull from the dictionary equals the user's input, print out the name associated to that key. So we'll save it and run it, and you'll see that Bob is assigned to key number three. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you could do with this. If we were to change this to a five, and we come down here, we could change this print statement to something like not plus, come down over here, apostrophe S, and then we'll do space boat. So if we save this one, run it, come down to the terminal, and we'll unfortunately get not Penny's boat disappointing. Okay, so that's it for this video. Again, I highly recommend that you start practicing this stuff a few times each week. It's going to really solidify all the information and really help you out as you progress. As always, if you have any questions or you really don't understand a topic, just leave a comment down below and I'd be more than happy to help you out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.